Welcome everybody out there in the internet to episode 70. Oh no. Bye, Todd Turner, also known as Mosaic Fan Art, and my lovely co-host, as always. Hi, sweet friends. Um, I am Sis, aka Hannah Joe, and together we are an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family friendly. Boop, 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 That's bow. right, family friendly, and we've got a family friendly movie we're going to talk about today. We do. We will get to that later. Yes, but first. Hannah. Yeah. Friends, today, um, well, usually and today, we follow this format. We are going to chitter chat about some nerd news that we think is interesting. Um, we're going to <laughs> talk about what we've been binging. Um, last time that we hung out, we had planned on talking about um a TV show that we had binged, but we did not have time to do that. So we're gonna do that today. Um and we are going to Mm-hmm. review pops is pull list if you don't know what that is don't worry we'll tell you and um we're gonna review two things today we're gonna review the spy kids armageddon movie which is spy kids four on netflix and the seasons have teeth a uh, four issue boom studios comic book that's right and uh yeah i got a lot to say about Woo! both of those same but first Yes. Let's get into. Oh, no. Dad, the service is really bad today. I know. It keeps says going my in and out. Connection is unstable. What the it, heck? It's okay. Say it again. <laughs> News <Nerd>. to us. <laughs> We were calling it nerd news, but yeah. nerd news. Nerd news. Hannah, what do you got for me? Lay it down. Okay, Lay it on okay, me. okay. I got two pieces of news because I only cared about two pieces of it. Um, right. I only got three. Jamie Maybe Fox go... as Spawn in the that new is movie. Actually, my first piece. That was my first piece. Jamie Fox so... as Spawn. I think. Okay, here's the thing. I don't care about spawn per se but my husband does he is collecting all of the spawn comics um mm -hmm. and loves it loves spawn that's what he has decided that he is going to um collect that's a that's the thing because your thing is fantastic four and trem's like i think my thing is spawn and that's like, great right, right he on, has guy. a greater chance of getting all of those than i do of getting all of mine <laughs> So I just, I thought that was interesting. I've seen, I see Spawn comics around the house all the time. Um, King Spawn, all of it. Um, and it's, I think him as Spawn makes a lot of sense. So I don't know if you know this, but Spawn is going to be in the next Call of Duty. Yes, I think we talked about that. Okay. And um, so Jeremy Renner as Twitch, which is a character who's been there from the very beginning with Spawn. Interesting. I like Jeremy uh, and, Renner and him and Jamie Fox. I think, good vibe. So uh, Todd McFarlane, the guy who created Spawn, of course, he left Marvel after he created Venom, basically, and um, did a big run on Spider-Man and then left and created Image with all these other characters, right? all these other famous creators. Which so, Image is maybe <clears throat> my favorite comic book distributor. Yeah, they've got a lot going on. So Todd McFarlane said that they were 30 pages away from having the script written before the writer strike. Writer strike, man. But this has been going on for a while. Yeah. Um, they were hoping to have this movie out in 2025. They Who said knows? something about Jamie Foxx had a health scare. Did you know anything about that? I have no idea. Ditto. No clue. But apparently they're like, oh, is he still in? Because he had his health scare. And I'm like, I don't know. What about Jeremy Renner? He got run over by a bag on bulldog a bulldog i'm just uh, saying how old are these men at this point yeah so no, that's not that's not me hating like no do however mm. work however long you want to work my guys right and don't be acting like you're late 30s early 40s when you're late 50s early 60s well todd mcfarland said it's now or never for the new spawn movie so yeah i'm for it i'm for it um when you said jamie it made me think of my first my other part of the news. Do you know what I'm going to say? No. Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, 
yes, wants to be in one piece. Yes. I saw so, that. Have you so watched it? I watched, I've watched some of the anime. There's only um, Trevin is saying that episodes. we should watch and review the live action. Yeah, we should. The the anime, the live action actually is it's pretty good. I did see a little bit of it. And it's fairly close to the anime. Now, granted, there's a thousand episodes of the anime, and you can only do so much. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, let's do that for the next time. Okay, we'll I'm do down. The, we'll do the one page, one piece anime, or Sick. one piece uh, live action. So hey. uh, maybe we can have on somebody who's a one piece expert. Who's a we'll one piece expert? Who, I don't know, but I know my friend Andy loves it. We'll ask him. I'm sure that I know I'm a sure one piece expert as well. I'm sure there's somebody from Prince Street. There. I'm sure there's somebody there. So um, anyway, so Jamie Lee Curtis shared uh, some fan art of her as this character on her Instagram. Dr. Carrera, I'm, I'm mispronouncing it. I okay. know I'm mispronouncing it. But if you go to her Instagram, it basically says, um, after this, all this baloney with this strike is over, um, I will lobby just like you all for this to happen. Talking to her fans. Well, one of the showrunners responded to her Instagram and said, mommy dearest, that's why we sent you the figure. I wonder if they sent her an action figure. I don't know. Oh, and then it says no need to lobby. Once we get, uh, once we get what we deserve and get back to work, let's talk. <laughs> Mommy dearest. Yeah. So I don't know where that's from, but it's, it's probably from one of her movies. Well, there was a mommy dearest something, but yeah. Anyway, so that would be cool. Jamie Lee Curtis. She's everywhere. I'm, I'm vibing with time, Jamie Lee Curtis all at once. She's you know hysteric. Well, you she crushed. All yes. You know I, that's what I was about to say. She crushed it in that movie. Yeah. Was, she's so she, funny. And she is hysterical in interviews. Have you seen the interview where she's like, I just wish that these concert, that these like musicians would just have concerts at like 3 p.m. That way I could be home in my bed yeah, by no 9 30, 10 o'clock. I totally agree with her 100%. <laughs> I was like, girl, there's a market for that. There's something There's to be said for someone who's for had no work done. She's a beautiful woman. All natural. Yeah. Uh, starring uh, opposite Lindsay Lohan and the icon that is Freaky Friday. <laughs> Remake Freaky Friday. That was good. It was I'm really for it. Funny. And uh, I'm for it. The Knives Out. Recent. And of course, Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Halloween Scream? movies. Halloween. Halloween. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what else? I don't you watch got, spooky Hannah? movies. Okay. I don't either. But that there was is famous a new... because they used a, a William Shatner mask was the. Gotcha. Yeah. Was gotcha. The, 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 the bad guy, Mike Myers. Anyway, go ahead. There's okay. a new one. There is a new cozy video game that is coming out. Is this the Lord of the Rings? Yes. That is called Tales of the Shire, and you are a hobbit. Is that what you and are? I couldn't. I couldn't get any hobbit info on it. In the Shire, and you just do cozy stuff. Yeah. And here's the thing: I'm a cozy game girly. Right. If I have to fight a bad guy, I don't. I want zero part of it. <laughs> I like. I want nothing to do with it. I want to have a farm and build a house and change outfits and talk to people That's that funny. are creatures that the video game has created. So I am a, I am a, um, animal crossing girly. Yeah. I was thinking that was, I couldn't think of the name of it. I'm, I'm an animal crossing girly. I'm a spirit fairer girly. Um, that's a more of a a teen rated game um, where you work as a, a spirit fairer, like in Greek mythology, gotcha. helping people mm -hmm. like go from like, anyway, yeah, it's a fun game. You're not good. Yeah. Um, and you farm and jump on stuff and talk to people <laughs> farm and, and jump on stuff. You farm and you jump on stuff to get to high places and you talk to people. Like there was this thing that I did and there were, there were a group of three boys who decided that they 
they were going to be in a band and they gave me a hundred records I was supposed to sell. And I had to go different places and talk to other people. And they'd be like, Oh, I love that band. I want 20 records. And yeah. Did you sell all your records? I got, yeah, I, I, I beat that. Beat it. Okay. It beat was a side quest. It, it has, yeah. It. It's a side nice quest. side quest. But That's hilarious. If, if tales of the Shire is Lord of the ring. Themed, it's presented by Weta. The That's people what I'm who did saying. The, the special yeah. the makeup and special effects. If it is Hobbit Animal Crossing, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Hobbit Animal Crossing. Hey, what was the one where you where you like had to leave and go build stuff and you created and you made friends and you you got that game when you're Spirit for Christmas. Fair for Christmas. I don't remember that's what it was called. That's what it was called. It was called Spirit Fair. I had to, oh. I'd went different places and I made friends and I invited them to come on my boat and, you like and I had to make grew, them and houses. You, and you, yeah. And you like planted pumpkins or whatever. I did. I planted, like... planted crops and yeah. okay. All right. learned how to like do that's, hilarious. that's, that's what I want to do. I want to mm. get, I want it to be that because how I would play it for hours. If that well, is what I've it got, was. I've got a new video game that's coming out in <laughs> This is my last piece okay. in November. Okay. Bluey, the <gasps> video game. No way. Yeah, for the PS4 and 5, all of them. The Switch, the whole Nintendo work. Switch. Oh, yeah. So this is a sandbox type adventure game, which is like you get to play a whole bunch of different things. And it, you get to explore Bluey's house and all the places around. You make friends. There are side quests. Um, there are also um, uh, other activities that you can do. You can switch back and forth between different things that you're doing. Um, so uh, this and mm -hmm. Spy X Family, they're both coming out. But um, I just thought Bluey, wow. Which, by the way, the voice of Bandit was the first person that they announced was coming to Lexington Comic Con, which is the dad. Do you know anything about Bluey? I know a lot about Bluey. The thing is, is Bandit is that's yeah. how he talks. That's just that's not a that's not a voice. That man just talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? God, like that man just talks like that. Bluey is phenomenal. Um, for those of you out there who don't have small children. Bluey is an Australian TV show. You can watch it on Disney Plus. Um, and it follows Bluey, who is a girl. She is a girl dog who is the eldest sibling. Um, and it's mom, dad, Bluey, and Bingo. Yes, Bingo and Bluey. Mm -hmm. Bingo and Bluey. Bandit mom, and dad. the dad. I can't mm -hmm. remember who what the mom's name is. I, uh, yeah. But they're going to be mini games and everything. So I got it. And you it can is, have you it's only 40 bucks. Episodes? No, but I'm going to. It is devastating. It is it is What's so beautiful. Mean? It's it's just so beautiful to like watch everyone who the thing that social media has clasped onto is how wholesome it is and how much it teaches parents that it's a, like how to play with their kids and that they can um like I, I don't some parents just don't play with their kids. Unrelatable content. My parents played with us a lot, no, um, I get it. but like how to play with kids and like how to let them know that you're upset. I and was stuff headless like that. Can. Like there was a, there's a, a baby race is an episode that's filmed primarily from this perspective of Bluey when she was a baby. I wonder and, if that'll be like a mini game or other things inside. Well, the it. mom was so preoccupied with what other people were thinking about how she was being a mom that she was we missing out that. on being with her kid. And that, and at the very end, so it's like the kid, like Bluey's reaching for mom and mom's not paying attention because she's like so wrapped up in her own world and things like when that. When people like ask us for advice, that's one of the things we always say, don't worry about what other people think of you as a parent, parent your child. Yeah. So many times we get wrapped up in what we think yeah. other people are thinking about us that yeah. are the, yeah. Our How it children ends end up is a mom comes over who has had eight kids. She comes over and says, hey, you're doing a great job. And then she picks her kid up. Oh, that's sweet. Well, anyway, I, if cool. I had a video game console, I would get it. 
$39.99. You can pre-order it. It's pretty cheap for a Switch game. I know, but is it going to be super lit? No, it's going to be cute. It's got to be. They're going to make it. If Louie's cute. Bank off of this. Anyway, that's it. Nerd news. Hannah. Yes. What are you binging? Okay. Welcome to Wrexham. Oh, okay. The soccer team. Welcome to Wrexham. The TV show um, where Ryan Reynolds and something McElhinney, Rob, Rob McElhinney, have purchased a soccer club in Wrexham, Wales. Wow. And it's them, yeah. Do you like them, it? Them running it. It's hysterical. It's but it's a true. Bunch this of, is it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's 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 a documentary, and mm-hmm. it's a bunch of Welsh people and soccer stuff. So it's yeah. Ted. It's like cursing up to like Ted Lasso shenanigans. Gotcha. Um, Adulty. It's adult for sure, but mm-hmm. it's super fun. Um, what else have we been doing? I mean. It's, I am, I'm married to a man who is from Kansas City, Missouri. We've been watching a lot of football um, that I don't care about. I'm currently wearing a sweatshirt that says, I just hope both teams have fun. Um, yeah, I love it. That's great. Yeah, so football. Um, I've been listening to, um, I've still been listening to Good to Great. I'm almost done with it. Okay. Um, I'm enjoying that book still. I'm um, figuring out ways that I want to implement some of the stuff into my own life. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently. I've been listening to people's conversion stories from other religions to Christianity, which is interesting. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Just hearing like what they learn and stuff like that, which is mm-hmm. interesting. Cool. Um, that's it. All right. I watched the flash movie. Did you like it? Um, um, I, um, I can't say yes. Okay. And I can't say no. It had such great potential. There was so much that was wasted. They make him be an absolute idiot in the movie, which is like, come on. The flash is not, he's not an idiot. Hmm. And they make his younger self in the alternate a total idiot. Sure. I'm like, no, just stupid. I, I don't know. I, Barry's it could a be, smart kid. It could have I mean, been he's a smart fun. young man. I just think that they just kissed this goodbye and said, you know, there it is. We spent a bootcoos of money. And um, yeah, I, I won't watch it again, except just to watch the very end where you get to see all the crazy stuff that happens in the multiverse. So that was cool. I remember a That's thing it. that I watched. Mm-hmm. I remember ha- I was, I was rap I was rambling yeah. on because I couldn't remember elemental. Oh, I movie. watched, I watched the movie elemental Gabe loves this movie. He absolutely loved it. And so I was like, okay, I got to give it a try. It was cute. Like mm-hmm. parts of it were cute. It was to some degree, like, I mean, it was, it was, a it was, a kid's movie it was very much about like it was without being overt about it it was a girl with immigrant parents learning how she who she wanted to be and respecting her culture while also choosing her own path it's kind of like what the story was about i got you the thing that broke me because gabe was like this will ruin you and i'm like i mean it's fine um but i don't feel ruined the end of the movie is the girl is finally like the main character, Ember, was finally able to tell her parents that she wanted to do something else. She wanted to become a, bl- a glass maker instead of a, sh- a store owner. So she's on to an internship where she gets to learn about glass. And throughout her childhood, she'd heard the story about when her dad left to go get a better life for him and his wife. Um, he did this like ritualistic, like goodbye to his father but his father refused to do it back for him because he but was his, like but her dad did do it but back. she did it and then oh crap <laughs> she did it and then the dad did it and i just <laughs> oh that's so sweet i'm crying about it now thinking oh. about it it was so cute oh <laughs> that is sweet it was yeah really so tender. i think i'll watch it then you should if, if, 
it, the build up for the last 30 seconds <laughs> is worth it. That's it's hilarious. Worth it. Parts of it All were right. just like, ah, but yeah, overall it was good. Well, I want to talk oh, about man. the thing I binge while we were on vacation. Yes. Invasion. Okay. So Invasion is a series on Apple Plus. The entire first season is out in about five episodes of the second season. Mm, so okay. I binge watched the first season and now I can't wait every week for the next episode. Are you watching it out. as it comes out? Oh yeah. As soon as it comes out, I watch it. Um, so I, if you like sci-fi, this is a great movie. This is basically, we are being invaded, but it's gradual sort of it's, it's crazy. Like, um, something happens and, uh, the, these like creatures come down and they're like sort of terraforming, but you can't really tell. It's not so obvious. Um, but there are creatures that um, attack and kill people and we're fighting them. And, but ba- the story follows like six groups of people. I think six, there is a, a young group of kids from like a, a, in England in like a primary school. So they're like middle school age. Um, there is a, a soldier in Afghanistan, in like Afghanistan. We follow him. There is a Japanese astronaut and um her girlfriend but we don't you don't really know that anyway we follow them well we really only follow the girlfriend uh, astronaut in space when all this happens which ain't good um there is a small town in texas i believe and we follow the people of that town there is a mom dad and two children that are of um middle eastern descent in like in america we follow them. I think that's it. These groups of people and what happens to them and how they're intermixed and intertwined and what's going on while this invasion happens. And then we think we've defeated them, but we haven't. And then we think we've got something and we haven't. But it's really, really cool. One of the boys who is a little bit, one of the young boys in that group of primary school mm. in England, Yeah, he he's like he has he's has epilepsy or seizures mm. and he but he draws and everything so you come to find out that he is getting visions i was gonna say he sees something and he's been drawing them all down in his book heroes he gets saved by the the soldier in afghanistan cool because he's trying to get back home and he made to made it to England. Well, they end up together. And then he sees this boy basically stop the aliens with his mind. And then, but they, he took the boy's notebook, which then ends, ends him up in Texas because he follows the stuff that's in this book. Cause this boy has seen all this stuff. So it's really, really good. I mean, it's on fun. your edge. It's like very TV, fun. TV MA, TV yeah. Yeah, it 13. Is. It's mature. The, my only biggest issue is there's this mom with these two kids. I, I just, I don't know. I just want to pop her in the nose a couple of times. But. She, she being not so great. Well, her main objective is to save her family, her kids, not her husband, because her husband was cheating on her. But, um, yeah. and she will do anything lie whatever it takes and well yeah i'm not a fan of that and and i am a fan of it i I get it so anyway yeah i would suggest if you guys like that kind of stuff go watch do go watch that hannah tell us about the show you watched okay so trevin and i binged a show over like labor day um weekend called the vow it's on hbo max or max and it is a docu series that follows um, Nexium, which was a um, Nexium is like, a medication. Nexium, it was like a wellness group oh, that okay. like focused on um, exec- ex- Nexium and executive success programs. So it was like a wellness group to like learn how to better like a self help program. 
um, it turned into something that was not that, um, and that was hidden within the the stuff. The thing that was that was so interesting to me and that honestly made me so angry is how the founder, Keith Ranieri, who is currently in jail. Pokey. In the pokey. He's in jail. Um, used psychological concepts to manipulate people. That's a cult. With, with I didn't know if we were allowed to say that. Um, <laughs> used psychological concepts <laughs> to manipulate people. Yeah, we can um, say that. And like overtly, like I'm watching this and I'm like, he is 85% correct, but the 15% that he is not telling you it doesn't, yeah, is it nonsense takes, it and is for him to be thing. in charge of you. Yeah. And so it quickly, I mean, it's, it is, it is PG 13. Um, and if you have difficulties um, hearing about how other people could be exploited, I wouldn't listen to it. Um, gotcha. they do an excellent job at sharing both sides of the story. Um, a person that was a villain in the first season, I cried for at the end of the second season. Oh, so they do okay. an excellent job at like sharing how her name's Nancy. Um, I was like, man, I feel really bad for her. And was like tearing up a little bit. And Kevin was like, you remember how you used, you were yelling at the TV two days ago about what she was doing and how she was using psychology? And I was like, yeah. So they do they do a really great job of like showing both sides of the story. Um, they clearly have a like a message they're trying to send. They think that executive CES programs or ESP was bad. Um, so if you are wanting something that I don't know. Do your own research. It's on. It's it's a docu series, and the people were. Is convicted. it a podcast or a show? It's a show. It's a okay. documentary series, but the people that were had gotten in trouble have already gotten in trouble and are already in jail. So gotcha. Um, you can Google it and see if it's something you might be interested in. I really, really enjoyed it. It was very interesting and intriguing. I won't to watch me. it. Um. I, I like documentary stuff about stuff like that. I like documentary stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I know. You're, it's not really your vibe. It's more of my vibe. That's okay. And I That's really cool. enjoyed it. That's why we don't it yuck really someone well else's done. yum. And it was a lot of primary sources. It was a lot of recorded conversations and videos and stuff like that. Okay. And in the second well, season, you, you get to hear like court transcripts. You get to, they interview opposing and they, in, they interview prosecuting and defending counsel. So it's, again, it, they do a very good job of showing both sides. And where did you watch this again? HBO Max. Okay. And mine was on Apple Plus. Mm -hmm. And if you want to talk about us with us next week or in two weeks on Netflix is the One Piece. One Piece. We're going to review that. That'll Live action. Live action. Yeah. All right. Well, Hannah, let's yes. jump into Pops Pull List. Pull List. Pull list. What is it, Dad? It's a list that is pulled. <laughs> like, you know how dads will say, here, pull my finger. This is a list, not a finger. And there are no stinkers in this list. See what I did? That's no pretty stinkers. So what dad is going to do for us, he's going to share with us comic books that he's been reading and stuff that he's enjoying right now that is out. So if you wanted to go get it, you could get it. He's going to share with us one from the big two, a book from Marvel and a book from DC. He's going to share with us an independent comic, um, which is one that isn't the big two, um, even though some of these things are getting pretty big, in my opinion, IMO, yep. Um, yep. as well as a new number one. So if you wanted to pick up a comic book and didn't know where to start, he's going to give you a starting place. And he mm -hmm. also is going to share with us his book of the week. That's right. Actually, yeah. I have three number ones this week. Um, it seems to be having a lot of number ones lately. Cool. Because the big ones are renumbering everything, it seems like. Well, I, again, my critique of the way that they number things is it makes it hard for people to onboard. You don't know where right. to start. In this case, it doesn't. Like, uh, And we'll get to there. I'll, I'll explain it when we get there. So my first book is the independent book by Image. Ooh. Ooh. It is called The Cull, C-U-L-L. -L. And this is issue two. 
So I don't know if I talked about issue one or not. I probably didn't. But this book is um, an adult book. I think it's, I don't know if it's M or I don't know how they rate them here. T, it's T plus, teen plus is what it's rated. This follows a group of high school, college age friends that go out late at night, early morning, pre-dawn to film uh, something for a, they're doing, they're shooting a film. Like Super 8. Something of that nature. Correct. But one of the characters had lost, I believe, a family member. They had mm. disappeared. So they actually are filming around where this person disappeared. Literally, no. Have you not read It well, by Stephen King? What they find out, basically, it's like on the beach, right? It's like a um, hollow earth type theory. They no. go in through this cave and come out and there's a, like in the first issue there, they show like, it looks like. like sometimes in this issue there they decide they all go and okay what does it um, look like inside it's like hollow it's beautiful basically this and the art in this is gorgeous gotcha so Kelly, it's, it's journey to the center of the earth-esque if you will sort of yes and um but like it's interesting at the beginning they're like oh they like walk through water and there's like a little fish or whatever and then like 30 minutes later like did that thing have arms before but they're, they want to try to find if there's someone here, if there's someone alive so that they can see if they know where this other person is. Mm -mm. And there's like this little like cat creature. And um, the one girl gives her like a bracelet and the cat creature runs away at the, it, and then it's sort of like, it gets a little adulty because they're there in this sort of garden of Eden thing. And things start happening between two of the couples. No. But then at the end, this cat creature comes back erect standing and says who what is god that's the end of the book no <laughs> leave and never come back <laughs> i'm like what no so my question is <laughs> is that the cat creature who has evolved to this sentient being or is that like the mom or dad or whatever but we don't know so time is different this is only like about a four or five issue book Oh no. I'm gonna they I wanna know. read it now, but I'm it's worried. We can wait till they all come out and we can talk about and it. And I'll borrow yours. All right. So my Thank Marvel you. book is Amazing Spider-Man issue 34. Which is hard to tell because the the cover of the book literally looks like one of my mosaics. And when I picked it up, I said, I showed your mom and I was like, uh you have to make that. I you have could to make, make that. that. Not only that, it looks easy. It looks so easy. And somebody was like, that doesn't look easy to me. I'm like, well, you've not made mosaics. This is, that looks this easy. Be, this it's just, easy to make. It's just triangles. I, exactly. It's just it's color blocks, triangles. Just, bam, shakalaka. So anyway, <laughs> what, so has cool. happened, what has happened to Spider-Man is um, this is a story that's been going on for a while with the Green Goblin, who's now good. He's mm -hmm. now goes by the moniker Gold Goblin. He had his sins taken away by the Sin Eater, which is interesting. Um, it's a whole other story of a deep theological discussion on that. I was going to say, I know Daredevil's Catholic. Is Green Goblin anything? Not that I know of. Interesting. Um, but anyway, so there is like this spear of something that holds all of the sins of the Goblin and Craven the Hunter is going to stab Green Goblin with it so that he can hunt the Green Goblin at his greatest because he would be his greatest hunt. Well, in the last issue, when he goes to stab the Green Goblin, you know what happens? He stabs Spider-Man instead. Spider-Man jumps in front to save the Green Goblin and gets stabbed. So he, Spider-Man now has all of the Green Goblin rage and he's going after anybody and everybody that's made him mad. So he's got the black suit on. Mm. and it is brutal man so that breaks my heart he buries craven the hunter alive with a shot with a gun so he could kill himself no and then he's going after mary jane and her fella so no. and um at the end no. uh at the end of this book the green goblin saves craven and says you're going to help me save spider-man 
Good. So we'll see how this is your fault, my guy. Yeah. All right. So my DC Ugh. book is um, I picked it up. It was not one of my pulls. I picked it up random. It is Green Lantern War Journal, issue one. This follows John Stewart, who what, is the what African war? war Journal. It's just his. He's a soldier, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I'm just I'm curious if like what war he's in. I guess this is what a war sweet, are you in, my guy? This, this book starts and it's very sweet at the beginning. Um, Cute. The deal right now is is that Earth is off limits to all Green Lanterns. Why? And um, they've been quarantined, and any or Maybe. any, yeah, any the whole whole sector our sector no green lanterns are allowed to be there i don't i can't remember what happened it happened a while yeah. ago but anyway there are still john stewart's still there and but john stewart's a little bit different he doesn't need a ring anymore so is he's he a like, green goblin then no he's <laughs> he's a green that's a different that's i mean marvel. a green lantern we were just talking about a, green goblin he is a green lantern but he doesn't require a ring he has like he's like the green gold the emerald knight or something i can't remember i i collected them but it's very interesting. Uh, a Green Lantern from another or goes to arrest him, basically. And um, and uh, it goes horribly awry. Um, he like puts green chains on Jon Stewart and he's like, apparently you're not from around here and don't know the implications of what you're trying to do right now. And, you know, he whips his tail and he leaves. So the interesting thing is that he's just trying to have like a normal life and he's he's with his mom who has dementia, oh, which is, man. he's like, do you remember, did you do this? And then she says it again. And then she's missing her daughter and her daughter's mm -hmm. no longer there, man. but John Stewart uses his willpower to bring the, his sister in and his mom thinks it's her. It's just very sweet. But of course there is a new, looks like an evil ring that has appeared in it sucked up one of the astronauts that was up in space and, um, yeah so them I'm in sure those evil is... rings i know so just I'm sure... just delete them don't create them in the first place yeah learn a learn there's... a book from middle earth so there is a yeah so that's going to be really cool and i I, th I really liked it and i'm going to start collecting it cool, and I love we that. get introduced to another green lantern who's coming and following these evil things that just came out. I can't remember what they were called, but the next issue is called the soldier and the green Knight." So it sounds interesting. I'm sick. All right. My new number one. Yes. Captain America. Okay. Number one. The interesting thing is this is legacy number 761. So it's really issue 761, but this starts off a new creative team issue one following. Um, it's basically. I, I believe it's going to show how Cap became Cap and all mm -hmm. that stuff that happened in his past while while in the while in regular time, like Captain America lives in like a rent controlled housing project basically in in New York where he was where he was born and raised. He lives mm -hmm. in the same place where his parents lived, and like the landlords like uh, they're tearing this down unless you can find somebody to buy this place. Cause it's, it's not worth fixing Tony. He literally calls Tony for a loan. Are you kidding? That? Yeah. yeah. So he's now Captain landlord. America landlord. Cap he's the landlord and he's fixing things up and people are kind to him. And you, you get flashbacks about how he, what happened in this building when he was That's young so cool. and, and um, how he had no money because after his mom died, he was by himself. And like at this book ends with someone telling him, you know, he's like, he's trying to save up enough, like 60 something cents to go buy some food. And somebody says, oh, there's, um, they're giving her out free sandwiches in the park. And he goes, really? He goes, yeah. So he goes, you should go get one. So he goes and gets the sandwich and they're like, it's basically a recruiting call for like Nazi Americans. No. So captain's face, cap's face was like, what? But, you know, I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see how it's going to play out. So the, this creator is Straczynski, Straczynski is great sometimes and not great sometimes. But I'm oh, well, I hope that this is a uh, great sometime. I do too. All right. My book of the week. 
Book of the week, it's the book of the week. So Lay this on is it pops. also. I said, lay it on me. What is oh, it? Oh, I thought you said, wait. I thought you said, hold on a minute, pops. I no, I like, said, what? I said, lay it on me, pops. And then you stared at me and I was like, oh no, he froze. <laughs> no, I didn't weird... freeze. I did not hear you correctly. <laughs> Wonder Woman issue one. Hey. Legacy 801. So it's really the 801. This is by my main man, Tom King. I love a thing, anything Tom King writes for the most part. Remember, he's the guy who did... Uh, mm-hmm. The me we've reviewed many things the the supergirl book mm. the um uh, hope they do make a movie out of that that'd be or yeah. you know what yeah. it would be a good a limited series yeah i think it's going to be a movie but you're right a limited just series. do so, a good five ish five episode limited series so there are a lot of words in this book but it is it is well worth it what happens the book starts out and a a woman, we think an Amazonian, kills 16 men in a no. biker bar, leaves two women alive. And basically, they did start it. Um, you can see what they, but so they, there's now a big thing going on where the Amazonians have to get out of the country. You know, we're, it's just a frenzy. This book is very political, basically. You could tell it's like, we want all the Amazons gone. They don't believe in our way of life. And we're going to split up families. If you're not, you know, you may be married and, but we're going to take your child because you adopted a child and she's not Amazonian. And so they've gotten this person very similar to Amanda Waller, who actually Mm -hmm. came out about, who was probably introduced to the comic book world in the same series legends back in the eighties to head this group to get rid of all the Amazonians. And um, it ends with him. Basically. And uh, he froze again. Yeah, It ends with he, what? With him going up against Wonder Woman. Uh Oh, and uh, of course she wins. And well, of uh, course she wins. Right. So doofus McNulty. Then at, then we get a, another look at what's happening in the background. And it's like creepy old white guy, America, American flags. And he has the lasso of lies instead of the golden, golden lasso of truth, which so he, he makes has everybody America, lie. He has America wrapped up in a bunch of lies, basically. So I'm interested to see how, where this is going to go, um, because apparently we get Wonder Woman's daughter in this series, which was teased at the end of another book, mm-hmm. um, which will be. Oh, I hope so, it's good and not like. Yeah, I do, too. I'm going to give it the benefit. I'm going to read it. And, we love the uh, benefit of the go. doubt. We love giving it some time to see if it is what you think it is. And if it's and then good, just or not. cancel if it's terrible. That's yeah. a fact. That's it. That's the pull That's list. A Those are the it's books. a fact, Jack. Guys, we watched <laughs> Spy Kids Armageddon, which is available on Netflix. I believe it's it PG. Is. It's Spy Kids 4. Is it Spy Kids 4? I didn't even Spy know Kids there was five. Like a TV show. It's Spy I, Kids I 5. It yeah, there was one that was 4D, right? Jessica you Alba. Scratch- it's, it's Spy Kids 5. Because Jessica Alba was in Spy Kids 4, and we went and watched it at Jim the Smith? movie Tavern. Okay. Because it had scratch and sniffs. Yeah, it was weird. Okay. It was weird. So anyway, the premise of the movie is uh, mom and dad are spies. Mm-hmm. They don't let the kids know, which is very similar to the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a code cracking uh, program. Called Armageddon. Called Armageddon. And it gets stolen by a video game guy. Named King named king but it's not complete so he kidnaps the mom and dad and in doing so the mom and dad then send the kids to a safe house where then they realize they're spies and then we all have to work together to save the world Mm -hmm. if you like spy kids one two or three this is all of them at the same time very similar all of the best parts in spy kids one two and three (laughs) 
are in Spy Kids 5, Spy Kids Armageddon. I'm just going to shoot straight here and tell you what I okay. think. Yeah. I, and I don't want to be mean, but the kid actors were not great. Okay. How old do you think they were? I don't know. But, but Judy Is it that and- the kid actors weren't great or that the script was subpar? Maybe. I think Maybe. it had to do with the dialogue and the dialogue is not their fault. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I believed the young boy better than the young girl. Yeah. Patty. Yeah. Now, I liked her though. They were I did. Both, that, she was so cute. Yes. And I think kids will like this movie, mm-hmm. which is where it differs from the first three Spy Kids movies. Kids and adults, I think, <laughs> would like the first three Spy Kids movies. Okay. Here's the thing. Trevin was like, well, why don't he streams sports on his phone, but right. cannot simulcast. We tried multiple ways, can't simulcast. And so he was like, do you want to put something on? I'm like, well, I was going to watch this on my own time, but dad and I are going to review Spy Kids 4. Why don't you pull up Spy Kids Armageddon on Netflix? And we pull, he pulled up Spy Kids Armageddon and, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this in it. Um, you can watch your football game. The amount of times I caught that man staring at the TV Mm -hmm. was significantly more than I was anticipating. And he had similar qualms as you did. He was like, that was, man, that's unbelievable. I don't like what she's saying. Why do they have to be so direct about this concept? I'm like, you're staring at it. Watch (laughs) something else. Yeah. You're staring. So I do think that it, it is enjoyable but i think that the things that about it that are more overtly kitty are more overt rather than in the old spy kids movies like right. it was very much this is the message we want you to believe here yeah, it is in is, words yeah uh, as a spy you have to tell the truth all the time that's LOL. the well that's not spy LOL. material L-O-L-O-L-O-L. but L-O-L-O-L. i liked it i liked the funny gadgets um, the little thought bubble thing. What do you call that thing where she throw the yeah. thing and make them overly cute? The emotion um, bubble, cute the emotion overload. Bubble, the cute overload. I thought it was cute. It was fun. Hit the kid getting smacked in the face with the big fly swatters. Hysterical. Was funny. Uh, Failure. I, I liked <laughs> Gina Rodriguez and uh, Levi Zachary Levi. I thought they were good in it. I liked their they chemistry. They were cute in it. It was they really cute. cute in it. I loved that the mom called all of her children and her like family. They're like, what? Okay. My love, my sweet, yes. things like that. That's how I talk to people. And so it was fun to see her saying that kind of stuff on, on screen. So Trevin, what did you think about it? He, the Zachary Levi goes to lock up everyone's electronics and Trevin says, good. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> in literal lock boxes. Um, I'm curious about all of the parallels that you noticed. And if we could list parallels together. Oh, about go spy ahead. kids. Okay. The kids leaving and going to a safe house. Of course. Not knowing how to get there and being chased by people and needing to use, needing to use their own skills rather than the homing device to get to the place, yep. getting to the place and having a clothes transformation and accessing gadgets the guy that was a crab very similar to the guy in the second movie that was a spider creature um the food would have been funnier if there was a callback to the mcdonald's McDonald's. yeah but they did that because they were giving out mcdonald's toys right so they had a thing right i get that so bummer that there wasn't any mcdonald's (laughs) the girl coming in and being like we're here to help and then oh, being like, yeah. no, you're not. And escaping. That felt very Spy Kids 1. Um, yeah. Spy Kids the, the, one. Everybody going into a video game to save the That's world. Spy Kids 3. And um, the bad guy deciding, I'll be good. Spy Kids 3. The and hand and was two. very, the giant hand was very Spy Kids 3. Um, them floating on lava, Spy Kids 3, needing to have two people fight each other. To what is the ultimate warrior with sticks? Spy Kids three. Um, the the rope the the robots with the um uh like Spy a hologram over top of them become good guys, sort of like the little the hands walking the thumbs. Hands. 
the thumb people or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This was basically all of the movies put together. If you like the first three Spy Kids movies, all of the best parts of them are in this, one. In this movie. Yeah. Did you see that it was that it was written by Robert yes, Rodriguez and was it was it Racer? I think his son. Yeah. And I Googled it and it is his son. Yeah, and but his has, son has got to be 30 years by now. 25, he's 20, 30 he's years. Like 26. Your age. Yeah, he's Miriam's my age. age. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and he he helped write the script, which I, I thought was really beautiful. And I that did. Troublemaker had been <laughs> the Troublemaker logo years? comes on, and Trem was like, "They're still going." <laughs> he <laughs> nice. had a giggle like about Jenner, buddy. Troublemaker. Yeah, but hilarious. the music was really nostalgic for me. It was. I did. There was a lot of that in there. It was yeah. the music was the hundred percent. Yeah, that was good. The spiky yes, music was very I, nostalgic. I, this is. Right. I would go back and rewatch any of the first three Spy Kids mm -hmm. movies. This one, not I so will, much. Not this one. Mm -mm. No. You know, I would have liked to, honestly, Machete, if they'd mm. got Machete in it. If I wanted just him one to be in character. it so bad. I was one like, he's their character. great uncle or something yes. like that. That's what I wanted. Yes. I wanted it so bad. Yeah. I thought that that's where they were going. They didn't, though. I thought they were going oh, to. Oh, well. Yeah, so there, there you go guys that's what we think about it if you've got young kids they would love this watch movie. it they'd love it they'd it's love like it watch it with them we were we were yeah. watching it and we decided it's very that cgi mm -hmm. we decided that um trevin's nieces and niece and nephews would love it yeah yeah and then yeah. after you're done with that you there is a comic book that'll be coming out in trade soon that you should probably read for yourself as an adult yeah, it actually was good that's making a the, face. We're talking about the seasons have what? What, what was good? The the seasons have teeth. It was actually the seasons good. have teeth. It is by Boom Studios. It's a four issue mini series. Mm -hmm. Um, and Hannah, give me the lowdown. So the seasons have teeth. What it is is the seasons: summer, winter, spring, and fall have literally became monsters. And rampage around the world, bringing the seasons with them wherever they go. Um, and so the world has kind of adapted and changed along with that, that people like become refugees of a lot of countries, a lot of everybody's moving around a lot as the seasons kind of like lay waste to everything. But our, our main character, who I think is a pretty unreliable narrator to some degree, I think he's, what do you think? Do you think he's a reliable narrator? What do you mean by that? What, do, what does that mean? I think he has his own way of seeing things. I think this story is not about the seasons having teeth. I think teeth. This, the story is about him. It's about 100%. him having teeth, the seasons of his life. Seasons and of his how life he cuts with his wife. With his teeth. Yeah. Well, I mean, not his teeth, but not his teeth, but you know what I mean? Like how like how like you can take a bite out of someone depending on the season that they're in. And how you are choosing to respond to them in that season. Right. Yeah. So let's get into that. Okay. So he, this guy is a photographer. Mm. And he is basically in the winter of his life. Yeah. He's at the end of his end of his journey. Of his journey. But he's not end of dying. his career. No, he's just at but the I end would of his say career. I would say he's late 60, 70 years old. Wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's not in bad shape, but. He's not in um, bad shape, but he doesn't have anybody. Right. He's by he himself. Doesn't have, he doesn't have kids. Mm. He doesn't have a wife. He's by himself. Right. The reason is his wife died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And interesting thing about, I, I don't want to give so much away about this, but. The spoiler at the end is so good. The thing that, at the, the very end, the pictures and the click, 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 click. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Do we want to just mm. talk about it, all of that? No, we don't have to. I'm just saying well, that, that that spoiler was good. So the art in this is really good. This is written by a guy named Dan Waters who wrote Homesick Pilots, which we love. He's also written some other good stuff. Um, the, uh, this book looks at this man is trying, he is defying odds and not evacuating in an attempt to get a picture of the seasons because it's never happened. And we don't, we don't know what they look he like. He basically has nothing else to live for. He, 
had wanted to be a wedding photographer and then become a sports photographer, but in a fit of passion, trying to impress a woman, a girl who then becomes his wife says, I want to be a war correspondent. And um, <clears throat> the first issue looks at the spring, spring. of their love, mm -hmm. basically. Um, but it's not a whole, it doesn't consume the issue because no, the it's, issue it's, is- Flashbacks are very tastefully done. Right. The his, issue is him trying to get a photo. His kill me. Yeah. His like, his like him, like talking to Cindy. I don't yes. like that as, as like a concept. That's just, that's never been my favorite type of narration is right. when people are like, I'm like, like having, having dialogue with someone. And then the reader goes into the person's and they're like, I'm like this. And this mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking about when this guy's talking to me. Like it, it's, it's, but hokey. I think he, like you said, he doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have that's anybody. How he, that's his conversation. Yeah. The next issue is summer, him trying to get a picture of summer. And Woo! I would say it was the summer in their relationship mm -hmm. as well. And how hot headed perhaps he was at that time yes. as well. Mm -hmm. More caring about care, him. Like careless. Yeah. And, um, and mm -hmm. summer, mm -hmm. the, the creature summer, him getting a picture of summer. Terrifying. The next, of course, is fall. And it is fall when they talk about her, her, yes. So you come to find out that his wife died of cancer and he basically becomes famous for, um, explain that, mm. Anna. He becomes, so he, he talked about in the autumn episode about how he kind of lost his, after, um, the, the loss of one of his friends when he was a war correspondent, just really yes. messed it happens him in up the summer issue it happens in, happens in the summer issue um and in the autumn issue he's talking about how that really messed him up and he felt like he wasn't really doing the bet like wasn't doing his job well but he always knew that he could photograph his wife well and that that was a thing that was true in their relationship that he would always be able to photograph her whenever and that he could always see like her spirit and her light in the photos and then she becomes ill and he continues to take photos of her, but it is not the, the line that got me, man, it really got me. Um, you always shown for my camera when I was looking for your light, but now I was looking for something else, something more cruel, something primal and ugly, which like, ugh. can you imagine being married Basically, to somebody and that's what he's looking for in your, in your heart. That's terrifying. Yeah, he photographs her dying, basically. Yeah. The whole entire steps as she dies. So, I don't know. Woo! <clears throat> and then Winter, which sort of had a... Hanging? It was a lame ending? I thought it was a lame ending, but maybe not. I don't know. Do you think that they lived? I doubt it. Doubt it. I... But... Does he yeah. photograph Winter? No. But Winter's the coolest monster. Yeah, it is. By far. Yeah. By far yeah. is the coolest monster. Yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy, I enjoyed like the story that they were trying to tell. I think it was very interesting. Um, to some degree, I wish that they had focused on, I don't know. Like the seasons becoming giant monsters and just rampaging yeah, I, around I the went, world is I went so into this cool. Thinking it was a different type of, of story. It's so cool, but it wasn't. It I wasn't thought that. I, it wasn't. No, it, it's basically a the seasons of my life. Yeah. And I was Which, thinking, oh, this is going to be awesome with this monsters. This is going to be metal. But it, like we're going to see all these monsters and what are they going to do? And are they going to destroy right. them? Or are they going to learn how to subdue them? Like I was excited about it. And that's not the story that they wanted to tell. No, it's not. Um, no. And I, I asked your mom today, I said, what uh, season do you think we're in? And she goes, what? Well, I think we're in fall. <laughs> I mean, I, she, <laughs> I was like, I love her. no, the She's season the of our, of our, of our relation. No, she was thinking, cause how old we are not like yeah. in, in, in our relation with one another. Yeah. And we came to the conclusion that we believe that, um, de depending we are, we hit all seasons. Mm, I think that that's times. true. Yeah. 
I think that's true about all relationships. Uh-huh. That yeah. there's ebb and flow. There's a time for all things in every season under heaven, Dad. I know. It's absolutely true. Thank you, Lamentations. <laughs> if I have a dad, have you seen the... Um... <laughs> You probably haven't. You're looking at me like I'm Here, silly. Yeah, I haven't. I don't even know what tech you're talking about. <laughs> There's this Instagram video, and it's um, it's a video of a, a man just standing up straight, and it's solemn. It's Solomon's guard, and it's like him standing there with like a sword, like protecting Solomon's bedroom. And then, like from the bedroom, you hear Solomon writing uh, lamentations. If I ever did make a deal with God, and it's like crying and like going through an emo phase. And they're like, "That's Dude, hilarious." You have literally everything. Like, why I know, are you being that's, like this? Yeah, like, are you kidding me? That's hilarious. <laughs> the guard's just standing there, like shaking his head, like he's yeah. at it again. SMH, <laughs> shake it's my really head. Really funny. It was really funny. If I find it again, I'll send it to you. All right. Well, guys, I uh, I recommend the book, but I do. I I mean, honestly, the art not, is beautiful. It is a different type of story. Yeah. So if you are, if you were like us, expecting, <laughs> it's not it. <laughs> it's not it. But if you want, <laughs> in I think November comes Justice League versus King Kong and Godzilla, so hey. that's coming out. Yeah, every dag on DC comic book has had like about a six page in the back of. Godzilla and King Kong. I mean, really, would it take that long? <laughs> I don't think it would take that long. It would. My biggest beef about the whole Wonder Woman book was like, where's the rest of her buddies saying, you know, we shouldn't be doing this, kicking all these people out? Yeah, like literally, like, where's Batman? Superman. Where's Superman? Where's Flash? Who knows? Where's the Justice Anywho. League in the Justice, no Justice League, League comic book? There is no Justice League right now, no. actually. It's the Titans. They're doing the Justice Teen League Titans. stuff. Go. Yeah. Anyway, Hannah. Yes. Friends, Break it down for thanks us. for hanging with us. We're so glad for you to hang out with us on our little corner of the interwebs today. Um, hey, our art is created by Nate Turner. He made that in Microsoft Paint. Thanks for doing that for us, bud. Um, our um boo boop 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 intro music. music. There it is. It was created and composed by Brockwell Nason. Um, if you live in the Nashville area, you should follow him on Instagram, Brockwell Nason Music. Um, he does a lot of shows um, pretty much every week. Um, he has a different show going on in Nash- downtown Nashville. So you could check out him, him out. His music is good. Um, I edit and upload our podcast. Dad maintains our YouTube page. And we're <laughs> thankful for you to be here. Absolutely, guys. For 75 episodes. 75 what? episodes. That feels like such an achievement. I know. We're and cool. Listen, we're ready for a big name guest. Yeah. I think we got this down-ish kind of. Or a medium name guest. Or a, a guest. Well, yeah, we can take anybody. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with us. And yes. until next time, we will catch you, catch on, you the on the flip, flippity flop. flop. Bye, friends. Bye, guys. Um, and Facebook friends. And YouTube announcers. YouTube announcers. I made that up. Peace and love. Whatever Bye. That means.